Hey guys, it's me, Siren, back with another video. Today is day seven of Hidden Figures, and today's Hidden Figure is Elizabeth Hobbs Keckley, who is a hometown hero um, that was a activist and also a dressmaker, which maybe sounds like they don't go hand in hand, but I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Elizabeth Hobbs Keckley, and you can hear how she was all of those things. She was a really amazing woman. Elizabeth Hobbs Keckley was born into slavery in February 1818 in Dinwiddie County, Virginia, to Agnes Hobbs and George Pleasant. She was given to her owner's daughter, Anne Garland, who she moved with to St. Louis, and in St. Louis, Hobbs became a dressmaker, amassing a large clientele, working to buy her freedom from Garland, and marrying a man named James Keckley in 1852. Three years later, she purchased the freedom of herself and her son, and in 1860, moved to Washington, D.C., where she worked as a seamstress for a dressmaker before setting up her own dressmaking shop. In Washington, Keckley's attention to detail, draping skills, and exquisite fit made her the go-to dressmaker for the wives of influential politicians and socialites. Beckley was friendly and sociable, making friends with well-connected movers and shakers of all races in D.C. and growing a clientele network via word-of-mouth referrals. Keckley was also considered a black American socialite and was regularly covered by the Washington Bee, the local black-owned newspaper of the time. Her business grew to the point where she employed several seamstresses to assist with the sewing and construction of her garments, which were known for their streamlined and modern look. In 1862, Keckley founded the Contraband Relief Association, or CRA, which provided food, shelter, clothing, and emotional support to recently freed slaves and or sick and wounded colored black soldiers. In 1864, the CRA was renamed the Ladies, Freedmen, and Soldiers Relief Association. The association collected funds from both whites and blacks to distribute aid and services to black families in the larger Washington, D.C. area and used independent black churches for meetings and events, such as the 12th Street Baptist Church and the 15th Street Presbyterian Church. The organization also held fundraisers, concerts, speeches, dramatic readings, and festivals to raise money and to encourage intra-ethnic bonds between black Americans. Frederick Douglass was a vocal supporter of the organization. After Keckley dressed a high-ranking captain's wife for a reception with the King of Wales, she was approached about becoming the primary dresser for Mary Todd Lincoln, the wife of President Abraham Lincoln and First Lady of the United States. Keckley became the dressmaker, stylist, and close friend of Mary Lincoln, often traveling with the First Lady and serving as her confidant. She was present for many intimate scenes within the Lincoln family, including observing Mary and Abraham Lincoln discussing the politics of the Civil War and becoming familiar with their finances. After the assassination of President Lincoln, Keckley wrote and published a memoir entitled Behind the Scenes, or 30 Years a Slave and Four Years in the White House, which included the story of her own life along with personal details about the Lincoln family. She included personal correspondence between herself and Mary Lincoln, who was grief-stricken after her husband's death, along with very public criticism of the American government for its treatment of the former First Lady. Keckley also included much detail about the brutality of her early life in slavery in order to combat the racist myth of the happy slave. She wrote that slave owners don't like to see sad slaves and lied to themselves that the slaves were happy. He never liked to see one of his slaves wear a sorrowful face, and those who offended in this particular way were always punished. Alas, the sunny face of the slave is not always an indication of sunshine in the heart. While the book is considered an important work today for its anecdotes about President Lincoln, details on life in the White House as a domestic, and information about Keckley's life from a former slave in Virginia to a black professional in the 1800s, at the time of publication, Keckley faced intense criticism for publishing details about the White House private life and was forced out of Washington in 1892. 
She moved to Ohio to teach domestic skills as head of the Department of Sewing and Domestic Science Arts at Wilberforce University, but returned to DC in poor health several years later. Keckley spent her last years at the Home for Destitute Women and Children, a shelter she had helped to establish on Euclid Street through the Ladies, Freedmen, and Soldiers Relief Association. After a stroke in 1907, she died there. In 2013, Mary T. and Lizzie K., a play written and directed by Taswell Thompson that explored the close relationship of Elizabeth Keckley and Mary Todd Lincoln, had a limited run at Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. The dress that Keckley designed for Mary Todd Lincoln to wear at her husband's second inauguration ceremony and reception is held by the Smithsonian's American History Museum. And in Steven Spielberg's biopic Lincoln, which was released in 2012, Keckley is portrayed by actress Gloria Rubin, which I've seen that movie and I never noticed this woman, so now I have to go back and watch this movie again and look for her. Elizabeth Hobbs Keckley, a hidden figure. Happy Friday. Hopefully you guys had a great week and hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. There will be links and more information in the description box. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.